Hey y'all, it's Corey here from Ensemble Texas, and in this Texas Nature Journal entry, I'm excited to share with you the Texas native shrub, the American Beautyberry. So the American Beautyberry is a remarkable plant native to the southeastern United States. It's best known for its display of purple berries, which we're just starting to see here in August in the summer in San Antonio. These berries cluster along the branches uh, following the, the blooming flowers. Uh, this deciduous Texas native shrub can reach an average height of three to six feet, uh, adding a bit of pop of color uh, to, to gardens and landscapes uh, throughout Texas. The beauty berries foliage consists of glossy uh, elliptical leaves that transition from a, a green to yellow in the fall. This plant is aesthetically pleasing in my opinion and attracts a variety of wildlife, including birds and butterflies, uh, making it a really valuable addition to any Texas landscape. So its common names include, of course, the beautyberry, the American beautyberry, and as well, the French mulberry. The American beauty berry prefers the moist soils of canyons, bottomlands, woods, and stream banks. The beauty berry is a relatively low water use plant, although it might enjoy some supplemental water in peak summer months. Uh, again, we're here in, in August and as well in uh, midday, so we're, we're nearing peak heat for the day. And the beauty berry uh, is looking a little bit wilty. And so I could give it some supplemental water, but I haven't really felt the need to, uh, as I, I don't think it's gonna be a, a question of life or death for the beauty berry here, especially since this plant uh, and these other two here are in their second year on our property. The beauty berry prefers and does quite well in shade or part shade uh, with a little more sun. You'll see be beauty berries start to, to bloom earlier and I think a bit more profusely, but on the, the uh, drawback side of that, you'll see your plants wilt a bit more. Uh, I'm even seeing you know, this plant here along this edge right next to it, not wilt uh, to as great of extent as this uh, middle beauty berry that receives a bit more sun. So it, it can tolerate some sun, but significant enough sun might cause the beauty berry uh, really to, to wilt during peak summer months and may affect what you think of it uh, visually. My recommendation is that shade is best but uh, the spotted sun during the summer can be just fine uh, as well. So where is the American beautyberry native? The American beautyberry uh, is native from central to east Texas, uh, up to the east coast as far as, as Maryland. Some iNaturalist user observations show the American beautyberry uh, has been identified even a bit further north, uh, but it can also be found in South Florida. Uh, there's some observations in Bermuda uh, and Cuba. As for Texas, the American beauty berry is mainly distributed to East Texas. Uh, in dense concentrations, it's found rarely west of San Antonio, and this is most likely due uh, to the beauty berry's preference for moister, uh, shadier landscapes. So what are the benefits of having the American beauty berry in your landscape? Well, first, it's great in understory shade. So the American beautyberry is a native plant of Texas that will thrive in the shade. With much uh, shaded and partially shaded understory to fill, the, the beautyberry has been a real welcome addition to our landscape. Uh, actually, right here, uh, this beautyberry is, is in the shade uh, of one, maybe two of those very live oak trees. Second, I think it's visibly attractive with, with its flowers and colorful fruit. Uh, again, the wilty, look can be a bit off-putting in summers, but I think most of the year it's gonna be an interesting looking shrub. But the, the beauty berries themselves are a, a, a bright magenta color that definitely catches the eye. Uh, and the flowers before them are, are bright pink, um, matched with, with very full, lush green leaves uh, in the, the spring, summer, uh, and, and fall. The beauty berries are, are a visually exciting plant, I think, especially in the way in which they grow. That can be affected a bit as to how you decide to prune it, um, but it's, it's a, a shrub that I think is uh, interesting to look at. As well, it attracts wildlife. So the, the beauty berries are a welcome food source for, for many birds. Um, we'll talk about this more in just a second, but during the, the late summer and fall, uh, the birds are very excited to, to start 
uh, munching on these, these beauty berries. It's also a, a pretty low maintenance plant. So if, it, if it's put in the right spot anyways, with maybe a little more moisture, mostly shaded, then it's not a plant that you really have to think about too much, especially after it gets fully established. And then uh, you have the, the edible berries. So the, these, the beauty berries are edible. Probably the darker the color, the more enjoyable they are. So we're almost there. It looks like we got some on that smaller plant. These could maybe get a bit more color to them, but they are edible. They can be used for a variety of purposes. Uh, provided you have enough beauty berries, you can make jams, jellies, wines, and salad dressing. Uh, remember always to, to leave some for the wildlife though. They did make the recommendation to not eat too many of them raw. Some uh, foragers, native plant foragers, have said that they, they've gotten a bit of a, a stomach upset from that. So beauty berries are probably uh, best consumed, cooked a little bit, jams and jellies, and, and even a salad dressing, uh, I, I think I've, I've seen as well. Benefits for, for wildlife in your landscape, of course, you know, obviously it's a food source. Uh, in, you know, as, as summer uh, really uh, fills out and then into fall and maybe even early winter, many birds favor the, the beauty berries. These are bob whites, mockingbirds, cardinals, thrashers, robins, finches, and towhees. Even small mammals like possums, raccoons, and, and gray foxes have also been known to eat them. As for, for planting and care, uh, where might you plant the American beauty berry? Well, I, you know, I think it's best planted again in the uh, shade of your landscape. So take advantage of having a, a really interesting, uh, beautiful plant to and, and potentially very full shrub uh, to add to your understory. You know, even better where you know it'll be on the, the more moist side. So I planted my beauty berries uh, in, in spots that I know uh, receive mostly shade, some partial shade, uh, and, and I think they're a really great edge or background plant uh, these are going to fill in nicely against this fence here with our neighbor. I think we're on the edge of our driveway, so on the edge of where people will, will park. So they will create something of a, a pretty nice, interesting full border. And so I'm excited for them to, to continue to grow over the years. I've also planted them in a few different spots around our property. One is on the side of our, our screen and porch on the edge there too. Uh, it's uh, you know in uh, proximity to a gutter downspout. The American beauty berry has become a more popular planting in our city landscapes here in San Antonio, which I'm super happy about. Uh, we have incredibly impressive uh, beauty berry shrubs lining the recently opened San Pedro Springs Culture Park. Uh, I do have to imagine that the, those shrubs receive some extra watering though, being that they're, they're city plantings, but they're really impressive specimens to go see. So if, in the, if you're in the area, uh, I definitely recommend it. As for care and maintenance, caring for a beauty berry uh, should be pretty easy. You know, if the, the location is correctly chosen, uh, you can prune back the beauty berry each winter by half uh, its height to encourage tighter uh, growth, more uh, flowers and, and fruit the following year. But you don't have to. It, you know, I, I think it's a good decision to prune it just because when they lose all their leaves, they look a bit scraggly. Uh, and it kind of makes sense to make a more compact, uh, you know, and you can make your own decision come winter. But um, as for, you know, establishing the plant, like I said, my plants wilted quite significantly in year one during the peak summer heat. Uh, and just to guarantee their survival, I watered them maybe one to two times per week. Could have gotten away with mine maybe, but I, I really wanted to make sure that as many of them survived as possible. But in year two, I've had to give the plants a fraction of the supplemental water that I, I did in year one. I haven't watered these ones that you're looking at here a single time. And we're here in August, a little more rain this year uh, in San Antonio, but even still uh, they've, they've performed quite well nonetheless. But one that's in a little bit more sun, I have had to give maybe a single watering every few weeks, but nothing more than that. As for companion plants, good companions uh, for the American beauty berry are the pigeon berry, the coral berry, uh, the wood fern, and the Texas betony. Uh, the American beauty berry can be planted under a number of larger shade trees, pecan trees, live oak trees, uh, or mesquite trees. As for seasons, you know, what to expect season to season. In spring, it's about the new leaves. They begin to emerge, and by the time spring is over, you have full leaves. Uh, that, that should be established. And you may even start to see uh, some of the, the blooms. In summer, the beautyberry flowers should be in full bloom um, and, and tight clusters again around the stem. And those are called cymes in, in a light whitish pinkish color. 
Uh, it's not uncommon to see the beautyberry leaves drop a little bit. Like I said, you know, many times here during the, the peak summer heat, um, that can unfortunately, you know, look a bit unattractive, but sometimes it's hard for Texas landscapes to, to look all that good and lush in, in the summer heat. But then, you know, as summer wanes on, some of those flowers can start to turn to fruit, as you can see here with these uh, few beautyberry shrubs that I'm, I'm with right now. But fall is, is really when the, the beauty berry puts on its show. This is when the berries begin to fruit most often and ripen really into their, their fullest, brightest magenta color. And so it's uh, uh, a really great season uh, for the beauty berries. Um, in winter, if the beauty berries haven't been harvested or, or eaten by wildlife, they will continue to, to hang on to the branch uh, through winter. Uh, as the beauty berry is deciduous, the leaves will fall and the plant will now look a bit twiggy at that point in the winter. For edible medicinal uses, uh, when the, the beauty berries are, are fully ripe, uh, when they are the deep purplish magenta color, they are ready to be harvested and can be eaten raw. Beauty berries can be cooked and made into jams and jellies uh, and even potentially wine. But uh, Foraging Texas, a title I already mentioned, uh, even lists a, a fruity beauty berry salad dressing. So uh, I definitely pick up a copy of that book and check that out for yourself. I'll, I'll be trying that someday and, and uh, share back here. Apparently beauty berry leaves can be used as mosquito repellent. Um, so what was once considered just a, a folk remedy actually was confirmed a few years back by researchers at the University of Mississippi. They found that compounds uh, in the leaves of American beautyberry can repel mosquitoes. So apparently you can just crush up uh, the beautyberry leaves and, and rub them on your skin. So quite an interesting finding there. As for propagation, um, beautyberry can be grown from seed, it can be grown from cuttings. According to How to Grow Native Plants of Texas and the, the Southwest, American beautyberry seeds can be sown in a greenhouse in November uh, will germinate in January and February, and then should be ready to be planted in the landscape come April. Um, as for cuttings, American Beautyberry can be propagated from softwood and hardwood cuttings. Uh, it's recommended to take the softwood cuttings roughly May through June, right after the first flush of growth uh, of the, the season, but before the plant has flowered. So I'm actually not in a propagating window for the Beautyberry right now, um, these cuttings should be four to five inches long and treated with some rooting hormone. Uh, all the leaves should be removed from the, the bottom half of the cuttings. Uh, the hardwood cuttings um, can be taken in the winter uh, when you prune. Really great opportunity to grow more plants there. They should be five to eight inches long and likewise treated with rooting hormone and kept under intermittent mist. All right, y'all, that's it for this Texas Nature Journal entry here on the American Beauty Berry Texas Native Shrub. Uh, so, you know, along with my own experience working with the American Beauty Berry in my uh, own landscape and, and learning from my observations out in Texas's natural places and landscaped uh, places, there are a number of books and resources that I consulted to produce this video and the complimentary page over at EnsembleTexas.com. Uh, you can find out about those uh, books and articles and, and more uh, by checking the, the video description below and going to the complimentary Texas Nature Journal entry page again at EnsembleTexas.com. And lastly, uh, if you enjoyed this video, then you might enjoy my, my weekly newsletter, uh, the San Antonio Ensemble, where I share with you one story uh, to help you get better connected to San Antonio and the greater uh, South Central Texas region. Uh, to sign up for that newsletter, likewise, go to EnsembleTexas.com or check for a link in the video description below. All right, y'all, until next time.